Hey guys, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW2020 video. Join us for our go home show on the road to the AW vs New Japan Global Wars or New Japan Light Global Wars. It's actually quite a short show today. Uh, we actually have three really big matches which take up pretty much an hour of time just for the three of them. But one is for the AW Live Championship which will feature Scorpio Sky defending that in that open challenge. And yeah, two other matches that I felt should do really well. So without further ado, shall we get into this? Let's do it. This week's AW Lightning. So this week's Lightning takes place at Tosin, Maryland in front of 14,612 fans. Triple threat action in the pre-show. Peter Avalon gets the victory over Austin Gunn and TK Cooper in triple threat action. Avalon pinning TK Cooper. This gathered a 44 rating. We then had Anna J defeat Gazelle Shaw in 924 by pinfall, a 47, a very impressive 54 performance from Anna J. We had Drew Gulak get the victory over Cody Vance in 904 with the Gulak, this drew a 52. Before La Sombra Armas defeated Samurai del Sol in 1015 with a Brilliante Driver, this gathered a 68 rating. We also had Maki Ito in action as she defeated Dr. Britt Baker in 10.22 by pinfall. This gathered a 41 rating, both pretty level in performance, with Ito with a strong connection with the young female demographic in our Steal the Show match on the pre-show. We started the show with Kenny Omega and Sammy Guevara giving us our 100 segment. Sammy's pissed that AW is pretty much all centered around this New Japan show, how it's all these people that either were good in Japan or are part of New Japan. Where's Inner Circle's time? So he says it's time for the Inner Circle to get back in the win column. It's time for the Inner Circle to show the likes of Kenny Omega and others that they deserve to be back in the main picture. So tonight there will be a blockbuster main event which will feature both Kenny and Sammy leading their teams in to battle. So 100 segment there, very happy with that. Opening contest saw Chad Betts defeat Alan Angels in 729 with Grand Amplitude. Again just giving Chad all the momentum in the world and uh, a wee showcase for Angels. I'll be intrigued to see if that gives some good pop over a lot of places because obviously this broadcasts globally. So we might see Alan Angels pick up maybe 4 or 5 popularity around the world. We had the team of Riho and Hikaru Shida defeat the team of Tay Conte and Nyla Rose in 6.40 when Shida pinned Nyla Rose. A 50 here, Riho off her game. Just trying my best to get Shida that positive momentum here. Another win over Nyla Rose, she beat her previously. And a 50 is not too bad. Pretty happy with that one in the women's division. Also in the women's division, we had Thunder Rosa pick up the win over Chelsea Green in 6.39 with La Rosa. Only a 31 here. Crowd were turned off with two pre-show workers. So again, just giving them exposure and hopefully an opportunity to grow as Thunder Rosa picks up the win here. But in victory comes a massive defeat as she is beaten down by the rest of the fashion empire. Mercedes Vernado, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD and Diona Perrazzo. And this 43 segment sees the Fashion Empire stand tall. But we're trying to give Mercedes as many challengers as possible. She's faced Startlander, she's faced Tony Storm. Sheena Baszler wants an opportunity. Thunder Rosa wants an opportunity. It's just giving ourselves a lot of directions we can go within our women's division. More women's action and it saw Soraya and Lana Austin pick up the win over Leva Bates and Killer Kelly in 419 when Lana Austin pinned Leva Bates. 47 here. It's just a case to try to get Lana Austin over, slowly but surely. Soraya is over as it is, so it's just a case of getting a tag partner to that. Well, we're not going to get her to that level admittedly, but if we get her a wee bit over, good. Uh, Leva and Kelly is fantastic fodder in this match. We then had the open challenge was accepted by that man going to WWE as of course Switchblade Jay White. He says he 
will lead the New, Jav New Jav Javan, Japan invasion against AEW and he'll take the AEW Live Championship from Scorpio Sky. So that was a 76. And their matchup was decent and we saw Scorpio Sky defeat Switchblade J White in 18-22 with the Fatal Answer giving Sky his 5th defense of the Live Championship. A 70 rating here, both guys with 70 performance. If Jay White's got to WWE, why am I putting him over? So Scorpio Sky picks up the win. So hopefully we get the benefit of that. Pretty decent. We had the Prophecy in action and oh my god I did not expect this one. I gave them a chance and they have absolutely rolled with it. We may be seeing a push for them in the future. A non-contest, non non-contest, non-title contest. About the head superb wrestling and great heat. The Lucha Brothers defeat the Prophecy in 1821 when Ray Phoenix pinned Brian Pullman Jr. with a Meteora. 89. Like, I know Penta and Phoenix are going to be fantastic all the time, but that's still incredible by Pullman Jr. and Jacob Fatu. I know 90% of that rating is on Lucha Bros, but wow, they could really help elevate our tag team division. So good on them, and uh, yeah, I'm intrigued to see who I can find to, to face them on Saturday night. They cut a promo, just basically the same what I've said there. They're the best tag team, not just in AEW, but in the world. And they look forward to seeing who steps up to the plate this Saturday. And when they're still champions, who steps up to the plate at the Tag Team Spectacular. 80 promo from Phoenix and Penta. And our main event, which I'll be surprised if it tops that. First gets a promo from the Young Bucks, just saying they quite fancy being those challengers to... The Lucha Bros in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one team contest rather than the usual multi-team affair. So they are really looking forward to that. They'll be in action tonight alongside Kenny in this big eight-man tag. I'm nervous. I don't know if it's going to do well. It's basically Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks and Orange Cassidy versus the Inner Circle. And it's only an 81. So you imagine if the Lucha Bros was in the main event, we'd probably be looking at about a 92 rated uh, Lightning. We'll just game pop, we just won't game pop in the US, but that's, that's still cool. I, I just want the 100 achievement, that's all. That's why I get a wee bit disappointed when I see an 81. So don't think it's, oh, I should be getting great shows all the time. I just, I'm striving for that, that achievement. This is a better matchup. Kenny Omega, Orange Cassidy and the Young Bucks defeat the Inner Circle in 2048 when Orange Cassidy pinned Santana with a super kick. So as you're aware I obviously try to push on cast at this moment in time but I don't want them pinning Hagar and Sammy Guevara all the time. Santana and Ortiz are, are so talented they can afford to lose and still look good in defeat. Uh, and you see his performance 78 there. A couple of there are a bit iffy but 93 from Sammy. All good performances from the baby faces. And we finish the show with a heated argument between the inner circle only a 66, I think I maybe made that a bit long. Five minutes instead of four. Yeah, if we make that four minutes, there's an opportunity. But tensions are high within the inner circle. Finish the show with uh, an 83, which gets his popularity in 32 regions, so that'll be everywhere, bar the US and Canada. So as I said to you, the, the New Japan show is pretty much going to be basically whatever matches I can put forward on the night and hopefully have a really good show. Um, I just try to like, build the storylines going towards the tag team spectacular, but at the same time building pretty much towards double or nothing at the end of next month. So let's try to build three shows at once, but hopefully uh, it's more of a fantasy kind of book thing that we'll be doing for the New Japan show and, and hopefully it pays off. So feedback was good. Colt Cabana raises money for charity, selling some of his wrestling memorabilia. What a nice man is Colt. Good man. Martina has joined AAA on a written contract so we won't be seeing her in All Elite Wrestling and Savio Vega MLW, what a move, and Koana Reeves extends this contract with WWE. As for us, Chucky T renews his contract as we're looking to obviously tie down Leila Hirsch to her deal. Doug Williams says that Maki Atoy is going to be a star, damn right, and a 4.55 TV rating so it just shows you with the deal 
we've got with our own company. Basically, the commercial deal we're pulling off is brilliant. It's given us massive ratings. Uh, as I say, the two biggest ratings I've ever had in the game with AEW, just purely with that. Uh, with the money we've got at the moment, so six million. If we can do that again, we'll, and obviously we've started to get ticket sales in for two shows and obviously all our pay-per-view revenue. Uh, remember, so AW Live will be the broadcaster for this next event for the Super Show. It won't be on pay-per-view. So I'm just hoping the broadcast revenue, which you can see massive gains since we we moved to our own network, uh, can produce big money here. And yeah, good exposure. What I wanted to check was Alan Angels. There you go. One show on pay-per-view. Well, not even pay-per-view, just on television. And the whole world is now aware of them. It's not massive, but at least it's a popularity of zero to something. Just as an enhancement talent. So we'll call it there. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you'll enjoy the next show if you decide to watch it. The Super Show against New Japan. I'll try my best to get people in. Uh, we'll just need to wait and see what happens. But thanks for watching. Good day. Good night. Bye-bye. See you soon.